Hi and welcome back. So last year I tried out a bit of smoking with my peppers. It added a really nice dimension to my sauces and it's something that I wanted to explore further. So Steve, what are, what are we actually doing today? So today we're going to build an ugly drum smoker. We're going to use a 45 gallon drum and we're going to turn that into a smoker, basically. Okay. Cool. So easy, simple. Brilliant. Let's get going. Let's get to it. The first thing you're going to need is an oil drum. I'm lucky I have one that's never been used before, but if you have got one that has been used, make sure that it is properly clean before you put food anywhere near it. You'll need a lid, and if you can get hold of an old 57 centimeter Weber barbecue lid, it is the perfect size for the top of a barrel. Here are some of the parts that you're going to be needing for this build, and I will leave a list of these things down below in the description. Things like these taps are a bit of an extravagance, but it really does help to get the temperature right later on. At this point, you want to turn the drum upside down, it'll just make things easier to work with. And you want to mark out four points around the base where it's just above the bottom of the drum. And this is where you're going to be drilling in the holes so that you can fit in the 22mm bulkhead fittings. These copper pipes are what connect the bulkhead fittings we just put in with the taps and that allows us to control the airflow going into the base of the drum and that effectively is what controls how much heat is going to be generated. So make the length of the pipe something that's comfortable for you so that you're not having to bend over all the time to turn the taps on and off. You're going to need to give some support to these copper pipes so I'm using a small U-clamp and this just helps restrict the movement of the pipe so it makes sure that it doesn't break off or bend or anything like that. Next up we're going to be creating the coal basket. The first thing you need to do is create some standoffs using these long nuts and bolts and what that's going to do is allow a bit better airflow underneath the coal. The grid I'm using for the coal basket is a cheap one I got off Amazon. Make sure you get one that is meant for coal because the thin ones just won't last. This mesh probably isn't the ideal thickness. I would prefer something a little thicker, but this will still last for probably 50 to 100 burns and it's easily replaced because of the way that we're connecting it here. The last part is to drill the lid and fit four bulkhead fittings. And the reason I'm using bulkhead fittings is because if you do want to control the airflow further, you can put end caps on the top there that just screw on. You can have multiple layers of grids. To support them, just use the same bolts that we used for the standoffs on the coal basket, as you can see here in my brother's smoker. The way this smoker works is you're controlling the airflow going in underneath using these taps. This helps you set and regulate the temperature since making this video, I've smoked a pork shoulder in this and I've been able to maintain a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius or 212 Fahrenheit by just closing one of the taps. So that was actually uh, a bit of work involved there, but I won't take too much credit. Let's yeah. see if it works. Well, that's, that's, <laughs> the, that's the real test, right? Um, my harvests are almost ready, so almost time for us to do some smoking. I'll probably actually smoke some meat on there before I smoke some peppers, yeah. but well, I'd suggest just burning it through once or twice yeah, and then get it get it working with some meat. Yeah, but thank you again for helping right. me out. This is pretty damn awesome. Yeah. Can't wait to use this. No problem. So, until Pleasure. the next video, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and stay spicy. Old man, old man, they're coming after you. Old man, old man, let's go out.